to pattern the sword I looked at reference photos. I then used this as a basis to create my design on Inkscape. I then printed out the pattern, taped it together and we can now make the sword. I'm using 10mm high density EVA foam. I put the pattern on top of the foam and draw around it with a metallic pen. I then repeat this again. Now we can cut out the pattern. I recommend using a box cutter knife or a Stanley blade. These are long enough to cut through the foam. When you're cutting the foam just make sure you're angling it at 90 degrees so that we get a nice straight edge. Next we're going to create a little channel down the centre of the sword. This is so we can add in a dowel for support. You can see I've done one already. To do that we need to find the middle so measure across at different points, put a dot in the centre and then join up all the dots with a centre line. Now measure on either side of the centre line to make up the width of the dowel. So for a 9mm dowel you would measure 4.5mm on either side. Once that's marked out, angle your knife at 45 degrees and slice along each line. The main thing when doing this is not to cut all the way through the foam. You want to cut no more than sort of halfway. You can now remove that material and obviously the dowel is round. So what you can do here is take a dremel with a rounded head on it and just remove some of that extra material to round the edges. You can then check that your dowel fits snugly inside and if happy you can then go ahead and glue everything together. To glue the foam edges together on both sides I use contact cement. I apply this to every foam surface apart from the channel and spread it out with a scrap piece of foam. I'm using a different glue for the channel and for the dowel. Gorilla glue is great because it expands three times its size so if you've got something quite rough looking like the channel here it's got little nooks and crannies in it the glue will just seep into everything and really create a really strong bond. First of all you need to apply water to the surface which helps activate the glue. Then you can apply the glue sparingly along the channel. When you're applying just remember that it's going to expand three times its size so you don't want to put too much in there or it'll come seeping out the sides. So now we can just glue everything together. The foam edges will join with the contact cement and the channel with the dowel will take a little while to, longer to sit. So I just put that to the side and wait for it to dry. Once this was dry I could then bevel the edges of the blade. So I transferred this from the pattern that I'd made and then I take strips of masking tape and apply them along the edge of those lines. I put the masking tape there basically as a guide so I don't go over that line and I found the best way to sand this is using an orbital sander. The orbital sander will cover a wide area whilst keeping it flat. To finish off this bevel I take a sanding block and a piece of sandpaper and just hand sand it down. Now we can do the bottom, so the bottom bevels straight into the centre line um, so you can just work that, the angle might be slightly different. So I've obviously got the detail down the middle marked out and to remove that all I did was just take a little bit of sandpaper and curve it round and then hand sand straight through that channel. You can see I'm using a steel rule as a quick guide of where to stop. Before moving on I just bevel the very end of the blade to give it a really pointed look. I also just refine all the sanding. Just make sure when you get to the head of the blade that you spend a bit of time working this area. This will be the hardest area to sand. Now you want to sand the handle with the basic aim of rounding it slightly. You can do this first of all with a dremel and then finish off with some hand sanding. I'm not trying to round it too much, just enough so it looks the part. So now we're going to add some detail onto this. You can see I've actually added some to this side. Let's do the other side. So basically you can cut off these parts of your pattern. Then transfer these to 5mm EVA foam and cut those out. For the pommel of the sword, those four parts will just be separated. So this curved part for the cross guard, you can just glue that straight on. Make sure you line it up properly. And for the pommel, there's lots of little bits. So all I did was dremel around the edges of each to make them look rounded. Then apply some contact cement to both surfaces and you can glue those straight on. It's pretty straightforward and once finished you'll end up with this. First wipe with a damp microfiber cloth to remove dust, then heat seal with a heat gun to close the open cells. To prime it I'm using Flex Bond mixed with some water. I added this in three coats 30 minutes apart. We don't put any on the handle as we will be gluing a strap onto there later on. Once it had dried you might notice that it's not really smooth and I've got a method that I use actually to smooth it before I start painting. 
I use gloss black paint and I spray it over all of the areas I'm going to paint. Then all I do is sand it down until the gloss part is removed. It kind of signifies to me that this is smooth because I've sanded it down so much that most of the gloss parts have gone. Before I start painting I clean it again and once dry I add on the first coat for the cross guard and for the pommel. For these I'm using a brass paint that I have. I put it straight into the airbrush and I'm spraying it straight on. I use light coats and build it up until I'm happy. For the blade I use a steel airbrush paint and I apply several coats until I'm happy. To age the brass parts slightly, I put some copper rub and buff onto a rag and smear it along the corners and the edges of it. I then take some of that and transfer it onto the blade. The reason I'm doing this is it kind of appears like very light rust, so I just sparingly apply it to several areas. To further weather the blade, I just spray on some light coats of black airbrush paint and smear some of it with a cloth. I then darken the edges of some areas with the black airbrush paint. This helps to make the sword look a bit dirty and worn. So now we can apply the handle. All I did for this was take a strip of faux leather, put some contact cement on the back of it and then fold it over the edges so it stuck to itself. So when you start you actually want to have it at an angle at the top. You can see I've cut a bit off there and then you just want to wrap it around. Once you've done that you can just cut the end off the other side and glue, as neat as you can. Remember to visit the Lagartha playlist and to subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.